Hey, welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my Path to OCP series. I want to welcome you guys back. Today is uh, day 28 out of my 90-day lab extension, heading back into taking the OCP exam. And I've made quite a bit of progress over the last few days. Not as much as I want. Uh, I hit a couple of frustrating points and kind of put me into a, a little bit of rut and kind of fell off my, uh, my pace a bit. Um... But before I get into the video, I want to thank all my subscribers. I'm at 756 subscribers. I've also added some additional content over on my YouTube channel. Uh, while my main channel originally started off as a place for me to share all my passions, it has really become a main focus on information security. And as I add videos that are not information security related, I get some pretty interesting emails and comments from people. Uh, kind of throws them off path. Uh, a couple of people asked me, um, where they could download the w wedding um, bone hub image and I was like the wedding is actually my wedding and not a bone hub image so I decided to link over to other channels and build up those channels for those areas of interest so if you have any other interest other than just follow me for my information security stuff you can come over here on the right hand side either on the channels or in the featured channels or even down here my other channels as I start adding stuff into them uh, and you can uh, watch me and follow me there too. So I'm um, uh, my family life. I, I do a lot of building Thomas train tracks with the kids. Uh, we do a lot of cool things as family. Uh, getting to scuba, it's my uh, my consulting company that I run for scuba diving instruction. Uh, we do a lot of cool trips, tours, uh, check out local creeks, lakes, rivers here, and my outdoor adventures on the side of information security, as the title says up here. Share my love of information security, scuba diving, outdoor, and family. Uh, I love being outdoors. Um, we do a lot of uh, cool things out there, hunting, fishing, camping, and so on. So if any of those items interest you other than just information security, head over to any of these channels, subscribe. As I said, there's not content there really right now. As I get time to film content, I will put content there. But my main goal right now is focusing on my OCP and getting the OCP done. So a lot of my free time has been dedicated just to the OCP. With that being said, let's jump right into today's video. So, um, as we're going through some information here, um, I want to share some additional links with you guys. If you're on Facebook, head over to the OSP study group. Uh, great group of people over there. Um, but to get in, you got to be able to answer the questions. Three simple questions. What is LFI? Are you going to take the OCP? And will you read the rules? Pretty simple, right? If you're taking the OCP, you should be able to read and follow directions, as well as if you don't know the answer or something, be able to look it up and respond. Uh, in here, we do have a lot of members, like over 5,000 members. And while not every member is active, a lot of the members share great tips. They're past the OCP as well. Things that have helped them, things that may help you. So head over to um, the group over on Facebook uh, and join. Look forward to talking to you over there. Um, over the last 28 days now, what have I done? So, let's jump over my lab notes here. So, I have got basically slowed down on exploiting boxes. Uh, I was averaging about a box a day. Uh, I left off last video with you guys on day 20. On day 20, I had uh, compromised 20 new boxes. So, those 20 boxes I have not compromised previously in my first attempt. Um... I've decided to put that on hold because if you're just going after the boxes, you're kind of not learning um, the techniques and the material that they want you to learn for the for the exam. And I'm not saying that the material and stuff they want you to learn for the exam is the right way to do it, um, but it may be a different way, something that you don't know about already. So I decided to jump back into the labs like I kept saying I need to do. And I have got, gone through labs uh, 1 through 13 right now. Uh, I'm still working on 13. 13 is a pretty big section. It's all around web application security. And I would say it's probably a good 40 to 50 pages of reading. And the reading's not bad. It's big font, a lot of pictures. Uh, you have some videos, and then you have a bunch of exercise questions you have to go through and answer. I can tell you, as I've gone through the labs, I spent quite a bit of time frustrated um, inside the client side attacks and mostly because newer technology changes changes the material trying to find that material uh the updates to the material and things like that to be able to accomplish the labs 
Um, you know, as technology expands, um, commands change, uh, systems become more secure, what used to work no longer works, so on and so forth. So as, a, um, as someone taking over CP, you do have access to the online forums using your account. There is two sections in the forum here um, that are pretty helpful. PWK updates and errata. That is the most important part, and that one is like the official updates. Then there's the PWK course modules. This lists out all the course modules, but this is really more ran by the students. Uh, it's not really uh, the official area to go looking. So if you come into PWK updates and write them, and you're having problems with any of your labs, look in here first at the changes. They list out the current version of your Kali image. So like right now I'm using 2018.3 something uh, is their current version. So I can come in here and look for the lab I'm having problems with, find my newest version of Kali, and then understand where I'm stuck at. And then make those changes to get the labs to work. Very helpful, it will probably save you a lot of frustration. Um, for some reason, I, I was missing this forum, I kept skipping over this forum, I kept looking at the other forum, drawing myself bonkers. Uh, I finally reached out to someone on chat and said, hey, by the way, I looked at these posts on this forum, can't get this to work. Can you give me some idea of what I'm missing here or where I can go read further about what I'm missing? I, I don't want the answer, but I would like some guidance to better understand what I'm doing wrong. And he said, hey, by the way, check out the official sections and figure out what you're doing wrong. And boom, that helps. So uh, with that being said, I am at day 28 now. My goal is to finish the remaining four sections of the book. I believe there's four more sections of the book. I believe there's 17 sections. Um, give me one second. Yeah, about 17 sections, I believe it is. No, 18. So I got uh, five more sections left in the book to get done. I have two days uh, to stay on task for that. Uh, my goal is at day 30 to have all the book done, uh, all the labs documented, and to have at least a majority of my report written for the lab. I, I want to get all the paperwork done and then take the remaining 60 days to basically uh, focus on compromising boxes using what I learned in this book to try to build uh, my enumeration and my tack plan to uh, use those skill sets to come up with a, a methodology that'll work for me as I uh, prep for the exam um, and move forward from there. All right, so what else is coming up? Uh, in a few weeks, I'll be heading to SAN Security East. I will be taking the SAN 660 Advanced Pen Test and Exploit Writing class. And I decided to take this class um, for twofold, right? One, to continue building up my, my skill sets, but also for my current work. Uh, I work doing pen testing, uh, red teaming, network pen testing, uh, research, and uh, quality control for other pen testing groups. So, uh, any place I can learn new skills, uh, build on the, my existing skills and learn new techniques is something that interests me. Uh, being a pen tester, uh, a security person in general really takes a certain mindset. You, you want to learn, you want to understand why things work. You want to be able to, be able to dig down deep and really uh, understand how things uh, function to be successful. And with that being said, I, I kind of want to add a little value to this video today uh, around uh, job placements, Those for especially for those who are kind of just getting into the field. I'm by far no expert in uh, recruiting, hiring, or um, probably even giving career advice in, uh, in the first place, but um, I can tell you some things that have worked for me over time and some things that I think you should be thinking about as you're getting into this um, field. Anyone can really get into technology, right? Get into security. Um, there's a lot of startup certifications, your CH, your Security Plus. All those will get you at least the understanding, maybe even get you into those junior positions, those junior roles. But you really need to have that mindset. Uh, I, I like to say when I'm hiring people, when I looked at hiring people in the past is, we can teach you the skills. We, we can't teach you the mindset. If your mind doesn't want you to dig and really understand how things work, you're going to lose interest in the field quickly, and it's not going to really help you. Uh, it's going to be more of a hindrance. Um, you can understand how to run every tool out there, but if you're not digging into the information you're seeing, <clears throat> you're going to be missing out on things. 
Um, the next thing I would give to you is the OCP is not a fin is not a finale. It's a start. So you t you sign up for the OCP, you do X amount of time in the lab, you take the exam, you pass or you fail. If you pass, it doesn't stop there. That is basically like your secret invitation to that job interview. You have it on your resume like, oh, hey, you're OCP. I hear about the exam. Let's talk to you. You may have passed the OCP, but you may not pass their job interview. Having those speed doesn't mean you're going to get a job. Um, doesn't mean you're going to get paid a lot of money either at your job. So you want to continue building on your skill sets. Um, the stuff you learn in the OCP is great. It's a great methodology, a great uh, stepping stone up to that point. Um, but a lot of HR companies hold names, uh, special acronyms uh, higher on the list to get people in the door. Uh, because they know of a certain skill. Um, other things I would mention too is look for jobs that are interested in investing to you. So you may find a job that you like a lot, um, but they may have no uh, money to invest into you for additional training. Um, they may not have any education budget. They may not have any way for you to continue building your skill sets without putting money out from your pocket. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, that's up to you how you want to handle it. Uh, if I was single, no family, extra funds, yeah, I would just pay for it out of my pocket. But um, being older now with a family and things like that, knowing, uh, seeing different uh, companies handle it different ways, it's something I kind of come to expect and something I definitely ask during the interview process. And I may not get to go to SANS every year. Uh, I may get to go to SANS once every four years. But in between those four years, I may get to go to Black Hat and DEF CON, uh, some other local trainings, um, ShmooCon, things like that, um, just to keep that networking going, that skill set going. But on the side of that, I'm also checking out other things. I'm checking out Cyber, uh, Cyber uh, Udemy, uh, and other sites, too, that have interest in me, picking up books off of Amazon and reading them. The, the key here is basically you constantly want to be building up your skills and keeping yourself sharp and fresh, uh, play hack the box, get on the Vuln hub, things like that. Um, you need to want to do this uh, to make yourself successful. Uh, hopefully I didn't babble too much to this video. Uh, I kind of went on a little tangent there. Just trying to throw some extra value add for those out there uh, looking for jobs, looking to get into this industry. I don't want this to be a, hey, you're not going to make it in the industry. Uh, our industry is hurting for people. That It's hurting for talented, technical people. Those that can get down in the weeds and be able to do the work. Um, those who are of that skill set are in high demand. Um, companies are willing to pay a lot of money for those people. And we see people leave all the time. Um, my last company, we lost several people within a short period of time to a competitor because of their skill sets. Um, they were looking for a different. So you gotta keep yourself sharp um, and buckle down and get through things. As I said, the OCP is only a stepping stone to the next thing in your life, where you wanna be. And where you wanna be is up to you. It's not for up for anyone else to decide where you wanna be. You make that decision, you make it happen. All right, until next time, make sure you like the video, subscribe, share it out to your friends. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good day.